good morning students today we are going to start a new chapter which is python native data types in this chapter we will study all the data types which are used in python in detail some of them are very basic which are number and strings which we have already studied in c c++ and java also but the new data types we will also study in this chapter which are list tuple set and dictionary these ones so we will study them in detail first of all number before learning of any data type we must know that computer understands all the all kind of data which includes number characters strings and some special characters also and in order to input that data we need some data types right and uh, for that we need to study all the data types and how to use them we will study in this so the first one is number it represents numeric data to perform mathematical operations because programming language is basically meant for computation purposes so in order to input numeric data we need the data type number so the number data type includes various types of numbers which are integer let me show you integer long float and complex numbers integer numbers can be signed integers as well as unsigned integers sign means if i give minus 5 that means it is a signed it, it is a signed integer and if i want to give long integer then uh, because integer is having a specific range as we have studied in c also so uh, if integer takes four bytes in python to store a value and two bytes in c to store a value but if value goes beyond this specific range then we need to declare its size as long integer and for specifying a variable with long integer we need to put the symbol l along with that number suppose i am writing minus 5 then i need to write l with it to specify it as a long integer apart from the integer values there are other values also which are which includes decimal point within them and we refer to them as float value or real values suppose i am giving to input a number 5.5 then this is a float value in programming languages these numbers are termed as floating point values and if the range is quite high then they comes under double likewise integer higher data type is long int and floats higher data type is double which can include higher values of floating point values and the higher values can are represented using exponent like this as it is mentioned over here 5.9 e7 that means 5.9 into 10 raised to power 7 which is also mentioned over here e7 means it is its base is 10 that means 10 raised to power 7 it's a very high value of a number it's a very high number and apart from integers long integers floats and doubles there is one more data type which is supported by python which is complex which is not available in c c++ or java so we are having a new data type over here complex complex number is having the form like this x plus iota y which you have studied in your mathematics also so in order to input a complex number which is having a real part where x is real and y is imaginary you can use complex data type in python now we will see how to use these data types in python let's see through a program i have created a variable simple i is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right so this is an integer value as it is mentioned in the comment if i write the value i on the prompt then it will result sets or it will output its value as such then i have created a floating point number f is equal to 9.87 so on up to 4 and if i write just f on the prompt it will 
display its value. And I can also provide floating um, a complex number also. C is equal to 5 plus 9J. And if I write over here C, and it will print its value 5 plus 9J. Variable C is assigned a complex number value. That means complex numbers are also supported in Python programming language. This is just a simple example, just to assign value to a variable, then that variable holds that data type. In Python, you don't need to declare int i, float i, like we perform in C, C++, or Java. We just assign a value to a variable, and the variable becomes according to that data type. Right? Next is number data type conversion. So I can also convert a number from one data type to another in a very easy manner by using these functions, which are called typecast functions. If I write int and in parentheses, I give the argument x, then it will convert x into an integer. Let's suppose if x is having a float value, x is having 5.5 .5 value, then it will become an integer and will exhibit the value 5 after converting int x. Similarly, x can be converted into a long value, a float value, or a complex value by using their appropriate functions. The function name is same as that of the data type name. Since complex number is having two values, one is real and other is imaginary, if I am giving the value x only, that means it converts x to a complex number with real part x and imaginary part will be 0. That means complex number will have only real part if I give only one argument. And if I want to give two arguments, then I will mention like this, complex x comma y converts x and y to a complex number with real part x and imaginary part y, where x and y are numeric expressions. So, a number for converting a number into a complex number, I can specify the function like this. Suppose I am having two different variables, x and y, with values x is 5 and y is 3.5, and I want to make it a complex number, then I will create it like this complex, or I can also assign this value to another variable z complex x comma y and if I print z like this then it will result like this 5 plus 3.5 i or i 5 plus 5 plus i 3.5 whatever be the notation will be used by your respective compiler it will be displayed as output to you that means two different variables are converted into a complex number where one is having a floating point value and other is having an integer value, but now it has become a complex number. Next is Python mathematical functions. We have studied so many mathematical functions in C, C++, Java also. The, uh, similarly, Python language also supports numerous mathematical functions. And for that, you need to import math package, math module in your program. And these mathematical functions are absolute, which converts the value of x into a positive absolute value. Suppose x is having a value minus 5. In maths, we perform it like this. Then the value of absolute x will be 5. Similarly, fabs x, that means it will convert a floating point value into absolute value. f is for floating point. And if x is exhibiting value 3.5 minus 3.5, then after converting, it will become 3.5. Similarly, you can also use square root function, which computes the square root of a number where x should be greater than 0. If I want to compute power, then I'll use power x comma y, the value of x raised to power y. Seal function the smallest integer not less than x. That means it provides you the seal value. Floor value, the largest integer not greater than x. Seal value gives you the higher value. Since uh, suppose I have this number 3.5 
and if i perform seal of x then it will give the value 4 and flow function will give the value 3 round x comma n x rounded to n digits from the decimal point this number provides the rounding of the number suppose i am having this number and this is x and if i want to round it i will give the output like this n i am giving the value of n as 2 then the output will be 3.5 this up to since we have given the value of n as 2 that means after decimal point there will be two numbers so this number will be rounded off 7 since there is 7 after that so 6 will also become 7 the output will be 3.57 exponent this will compute exponent of x log x it will compute the natural logarithm log 10x this is uh, it will compute log with base 10 then cmp that is comparing the value if i want to compare two variables x and y that can be done by using cmp xy if both are equal so it will compare the values of x and y if both are equal it will give zero result if x is less than y it will give minus 1 and if x is greater than y it results into plus 1 so it compares the value of two variables x and y mod f x the, fr the fractional and integer parts of x in a two item tuple both parts have the same sign as x the integer part is returned as a float so it will compute the modulus of f fractional integer part of x it returns the fractional integer part of x maximum of a list and minimum of a list suppose i have a list of numbers max x1 x2 up to xn so from this list it is suppose if it is having 10 elements then among those 10 elements it will return you the largest element similarly min x1 x2 up till xn it will provide you the smallest element among those elements that means these are very simple functions by using them we can compute either the uh, we can get either the maximum or minimum value of a number next is all these functions have been executed in a program but before using them you need to import math x is equal to minus 10.5 and absolute of x then it will give the result 10.5 similarly fabs can be used it will give you the result 9.5 square root of 256 math dot square root x you can use math dot square root x also by this method you can fetch the square root value of a number then power function seal function all these functions can be implemented and this program is basically to make you understand how these all functions work this is its respective output you can see from here and all these you can implement in your practical class also these are their respective results log x is equal to 0 dot format y that means in all the output statements we have written like this in order to get the proper output i have already told you by putting these arguments in parentheses or curly braces zero it will put the value in this zero and provide you the result suppose uh, let's take an example this format cmp 0 comma 1 is equal to 2 that means there are three vari variables to be substituted in this expression where x will be inserted at zero location y will be inserted at 1 and z will be inserted at 2 so the output will be x comparison of 10 20 is equal to whatever be the result the answer will be displayed to you so let's see the output of this function cmp the output will be like this
CMP ten comma twenty is equal to minus one. So this is the output for this function. I hope you understand. Next is one important note is here: mathematical functions, absolute, round, and CMP do not required to import math namespace. If we want to use these functions, we can skip these. Uh, we can skip to include math namespace or math library in your program. Now, Python trigonometric functions. there are various trigonometric functions also available with python all the trigonometric functions can be performed like c sin cos tangent inverse sin cos inverse tangent inverse a tan 2 which is basically tangent then degrees to radian conversion and radian to degrees conversion and hypotenuse can also be used with this hypotenuse basically computes the euclidean distance that we perform in mathematics also so all of them can be used where x should be in radians when we are going to compute sin cosine tangent a sin a cos a tan tangent etc so this is the respective program for it you can see that import math x is equal to 30 Then y is equal to math dot radians x. Print radian zero is equal to one dot format x comma y. So we have given the value of x in degrees, which is thirty degree, and now we are going to convert it into radians. That can be done math dot radians x. So radian zero is equal to one dot format x y, which is the format to print the output. So the radian of thirty will be. Let's see the output. This one. This one, zero point five two three, so, so this is the radian of thirty degree value. Next is, if I convert radians into degrees, then what will be the output? X is equal to one point five seven, which is the value given in radians, and I want to convert it into degrees. Y is equal to math dot degrees x. So after printing the output, we can see. the output will be degrees 1.57 is equal to 89.9 nearly to 90 degree similarly all the sine cosine tangent cotangent functions can be executed by putting the values in radians so these are their respective examples you can see this program and execute it i just zoom out the screen so that you can see the entire program so by using all these we can perform all trigonometric functions next are random number functions random numbers are very important in order to design a game or in some program sometimes we need to generate random numbers then we can generate random numbers by using random number functions so this can be done as follows first of all you should know that random numbers are very useful in numerous computer science problems such as simulators games security privacy testing applications etc so python language provides a large set of random number functions to handle such computer science problems so these are list of random number functions first of all the simplest function which is random a random number r such that it will generate a random number within the range 0 to 1 then uniform x comma y the random float are such that it will be generated within the range x and y in a random function the first one it generates the number within the range 0 to 1 by default but if we want to specify a certain range then we can use the random number function uniform and specify the range x comma y and within that range the number the random number will be generated then the next function is seed 
This function provides the initial value from which random numbers should be generated in our program. It sets the starting integer value used in generating random numbers. This function is called before calling any other random number function. Then choice sequence. A random item from a string, list, or tuple. Sequence is like list, tuple, etc. So if we specify a particular sequence, if I give list of numbers, then choice will generate a random number by picking the element from that list. Then shuffle list. This just randomizes the items in a list. Suppose I give a list 10, 20, 30, 40. And after printing its result, it will shuffle all the elements. They cannot be in the same order in which we have given them in the input. Their sequence will be changed. So this function is basically used to shuffle the elements of a list. Then the next one is rand range, start, stop, and step. It is like a range function, which we use with for loop. So rand range generates the random numbers within this range, where we specify a starting point, a stopping condition, and step size also. So it generates random numbers, selected item from a specified range. So let's see a program in order to understand all these functions. Import random r1 is equal to random dot random. So it generates a random number within the range 0 to 1. And we have created another random number r2, random dot random. And it also generates a random number within the range 0 to 1. And if I want to generate a random number between the range 10 to 20, then I will use the function uniform. Random dot uniform 10 comma 20. So it will generate a random number within this range. Then we have generated another random number also within this range. In order to see, the value will be different. Then random dot seed 15. That means we have set the value 15. Then all the random numbers will be generated ahead 15, but not below 15. Then we will use a random function and it generates number beyond 15. Then list 70, 20, 30, 40, 50. We have provided a list of numbers. And then R1 is equal to random dot choice. The result will be assigned to R1 so that we can print it later on. Then a random number will be generated by picking an element from this list. Next is we have given a string value and we also use the same function choice so that one character will be chosen as a random character. Then we can do it by using random dot choice and give this str as an input as an argument then it generates a random number picking from this string then shuffle list we can shuffle the list by using random dot shuffle list then the entire list will be shuffled and will be displayed to you next is this is the output respect rand range Ra random dot rand range 10 100 and 3 that means the starting point will be 10, the maximum numbers will be generated up to 100, and the step size will be 3. And in the next example, we have chosen the value 4, that means the step size will be 4. So let's see the respective output of these functions. See, in the ran by using random function, this output is generated, which is within the range 0 to 1. This is also 0 to 1. Then we have given a uh, uniform number which starts from 10 to 20. So we have generated two random numbers, which are 18 and 10. Then random number with seed. So it generates a random number according to this. Uniform random number, 170. Then uniform random number from string, T. This, is, this has been chosen from a list. A uniform random number from a string, from Python, it has chosen T. Then shuffled list, the entire list is shuffled. Random number from rand range, when we where we have given the step size th uh, three, then it generates the random number thirteen. And when we have given the step size four, it has generated the output as ninety four. So these are the respective outputs. You can also do these programming practices in your practical part and see the results. Now Python mathematical constants. 
there are basically two python mathematical constants pi and exponent which are very important in maths and you can get their values by importing the math namespace print pi which is pi is equal to format math.py so in order to fetch that value you need to write math.py then its value will be fetched and you can print its value pi is equal to 3.14 like this and then another mathematical constant is exponent which is represented as e in order to fetch its value you will write math.e and its value 2.71 will be displayed if somebody doesn't know their exact value or want more accuracy in their program then we should get their value from the math na namespace rather than initializing their value as the pi is equal to 3.14 and e is equal to 2.71 we usually use up to two decimal points but in order to increase the accuracy we should use the inbuilt values uh, which which can be fetched by using math namespace using math.py and math.e in python in order to improve programs output and to get more accuracy so this is all about numbers data type in python where we have studied various data types integer float then complex also long int was there and float includes double also we have studied these data types then we have studied various mathematical functions like abs fabs seal round floor etc and then we have studied trigonometric functions then we have studied random number functions and then we have studied mathematical constants all of these concepts come under number data type thank you